Hello, and welcome back to Coffee Break Blogging, where today we are going to get deeper into the topic of traffic. Specifically, what we're going to talk about today is free traffic versus paid traffic, and we're going to do a comparison between the two. We're going to call it the smackdown, uh, because here's the thing. There's definitely differences between the two thing, the way the two types of traffic work, and it's not just because one costs money. So we really do need to look into what is involved with free traffic versus paid traffic, and also I want to make the point to you that free traffic really isn't free, okay? Most people don't even consider paid traffic because they just think, well, that costs money. I therefore don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, so they immediately go to the free traffic. But I want you to understand that it isn't free. And not only that, your results are far from guaranteed. So let's go through the free traffic uh, methods first. First one would be the obvious one, and that is simple SEO, if you want to call it simple, that is. Um, so this involves writing a boatload of content. So that right there is time consuming. Uh, definitely an important thing to write content. But um, if you're writing it because you're trying to appease Google, that's a whole different consideration, a whole different thing to worry about than if you're writing it for your subscribers and where you're having a conversation with your subscribers and helping them through your content. If you're writing it because Google likes certain things, that's a problem. It actually detracts from the quality of the content on your site. The other thing is that if you've had any experience doing this, you realize what a moving target Google can be. Uh, it can be really difficult, really frustrating to try to rank your content inside of Google uh, because SEO rules are always changing. People don't even know what the heck they are half the time. Um, and it's, it's, it's just a very frustrating thing. So if you're depending on writing lots of content and getting ranked in Google to get your traffic, you are going to have an uphill climb on your hands. Now, the next one would be Guest posting. Now, guest posting is popular with bloggers as a traffic generation method. And it basically means that you're going to write really awesome content and you're going to go and you're going to publish it someplace else, not your own blog. You're going to put it on somebody else's blog, preferably a uh, blog that has a fair amount of traffic on its own. So therefore, you can get some of that traffic and bring it over to you by putting backlinks inside of your guest post. Now, here's the thing. Guest posting does work as a strategy. It's just that it also can be an uphill fight. And not only that, um, it, it just isn't quite as effective today as it used to be. Um, a lot of, um, well, let's just put it this way. A lot of guest posts are crummy in terms of quality. So that's one thing. So a lot of blogs have just shut down from taking guest posts. They just won't do it. They say guest posts are not as good as what I can do, and they're just not going to do it. Other blog owners are not, they're just not that clued in with how guest posting works. So therefore, they don't take them either. And they're like, I don't even know. I don't want to do that. So you, you, as a person who wants to promote your own blog, can run up into a headwind with blogs that just don't want to post your stuff. They just don't want to do it. Or the ones that do often have incredibly high standards in terms of content quality, which is good, actually. That's a great thing, but it makes it tougher on you to get through. Not only that, at the end of the day, the amount of traffic that a guest post can bring you varies all over the place. And in most cases, it isn't that high. There are cases where if you put the exact right piece of content, you know, really, really killer stuff in front of the perfect audience and a really large audience, that you can get a fair amount of traffic from a guest post. And it'll be the gift that keeps on giving. If it ranks well, you can just get traffic for the long term. But most guest posts will not work out that well, okay? So, again, a lot of labor involved with doing this, and the results are not guaranteed. Another traffic generation uh, that's quote-unquote free is trying to get influencers to link to you. Now, here's the thing. If you go out on social media or other blog owners and you try to get other people to link to you, it can be a tough thing. Most of the time, they're not going to do it on their site. 
Uh, some cases they will, but you've, but there's funny, there's people out there who have templated emails, like swipe file emails on how to get through to an influencer. It's like all this guessing game on how to get through somebody's inbox. And it's just a funny game. It really is. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I am not a big fan at feeling like I have to depend on other people to grow my business. And I would think that you're the same way. Now, it's not that it doesn't work, but um, you know, it's it can be a little bit of an odd feeling to feel like you have to go to somebody and be like, hey, um, my stuff's really good. You might find it interesting. And really what you're trying to say is, can you link to me? But you don't want to say it. It's just kind of an odd thing. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of it, although it can work in some cases. Now, closely related to this would be the idea of creating viral posts. Now, the idea of a viral post, by the way, is just any post that gets shared an awful lot, and so therefore it kind of spreads like a virus. That's the idea behind it. Now, now I did say creating a viral post, and I will be the first to tell you that you can't just engineer one of these things. Um, most of the time, if a post goes viral, it's kind of luck of the draw. But there are some things that you can do to kind of prime it up. But it's not always going to work. It just isn't always going to work. And not only that, typically you've got to seed it. You've got to push it along before it gets that momentum and starts going viral. And how are you going to push it along? You're going to be going to these influencers and trying to get them to retweet your stuff and share it on Facebook and stuff like that so that it goes into their community and then hopefully you get some viral promotion. It's a lot of labor, okay? But it can work. It's just not a guaranteed thing. Let's move on to another free traffic method, and that is video marketing. Now, making YouTube videos, or you can post them on other sites too, but we all know YouTube is the biggie. Now, it works too, but we also know, and you will know too if you've ever made a video, is that they can be harder. (laughs) They can be more difficult. Now, in some cases, some some of you may be better at video than writing, which is fine. But there's technical things involved with making video. Um, And not only that, when you put a video up on YouTube, it's not guaranteed to get views. So there still is the promotional aspect. You know, I would say half, if not more, of the battle of creating content is what comes after you publish it. Because most content is just going to sit there and not get noticed by that many people unless you push it along and really promote it. And it really does work this way for videos as well. It's not going to get a lot of views in many cases unless you really peg the SEO really well, or you kind of push it along by getting people to link to it or embed it or things like that, okay? Now, a related strategy to this that is also coming under the free traffic uh, column would be podcasting, like I'm doing right now. Now, podcasting does work, but it's not an instantaneous traffic flow. In fact, it's very long-term. Podcasting is a long-term play. Um, You can build up an insane amount of engagement with your listeners through podcasting. So for many people, it is a good thing to do, but it's not the kind of thing that you could depend on podcasting to totally get the word out for you, in my personal opinion, without doing a lot of auxiliary marketing around the edges, okay? But it it does work. Um, The ROI is there. I actually tracked the ROI of this podcast, and it's definitely there. So I know that it's definitely worth my time. Um, And uh, if you do it right, it can definitely be worth it for you. So that's a free traffic method. Not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it can work. And then the last one I'm going to mention here is the idea of running contest. Now, the idea of running contest is basically a type of content where you're going to give something away, okay? So it's very similar to a viral post. It's just the main draw into it is the fact that you're going to be running a contest. You, part of the, the criteria for entry to this contest would be the idea that they need to share it. So that's how you get the viral component. Now, the one problem with the running a contest is that it can be sort of 
untargeted in how it works. You are going to get people um, who are coming in who just want to try to win, but they really don't want to engage with your brand all that much. But it can work as a promotional medium and as a way to get traffic. You'll get a spike out of it if you do it right. Um, and then it's a matter of, of how you follow through to see how many of those people are going to stick around for the long haul. But it can work. It is a fair amount of work. It's not really free because of the amount of work involved. Also, the fact that you got to have something to give away. Uh, but it can work. Okay. So those are a bunch of free traffic methods. I think you will see that the overriding uh, theme of all of this is that they are a lot of work and they're not guaranteed results. Okay. So let's contrast that with doing paid traffic. Now I'm not going to get into a bunch of methods here because it's all free. You know, you pay for it, you get it. That's kind of the way it works. You pay for traffic, you're going to get that traffic. And you can go to the likes of Facebook or uh, Google AdWords or, you know, pretty much any social network out there today has an ad program. Uh, there's also the the various banner ad networks like Site Scout, and uh, there's retargeting like Perfect Audience. A lot of these things out there. But basically, if you pay for it, you're going to get it. So that right there contrasts it with free traffic in that you do all that labor with free traffic and your results are not guaranteed. With paid traffic, if you fork out the money, you're guaranteed to get that traffic. You're going to get what you paid for, okay? The trick, quote-unquote, is that you need to do something effective with that traffic when they get there so that you don't lose money. You don't want to fart money into the wind here, okay? But that's the game with paid traffic, and you're going to get it if you pay for it. The other thing that's great about paid traffic is that you can very precisely target who you want to bring to your site. Free traffic is very untargeted. Now, you can target it by the nature of the content that you're making, but you're, you can't really control what you know who comes it's just uh, it's just a matter of who gets curious one day and clicks on the link or whatever whereas if you know especially if you use a network like facebook that has absolutely insane targeting capability you can say i want to get uh women between the ages of 30 and 35 who are interested in blah 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 and they live in a specific geographical area and they got married within the last year. I mean, you can get that targeted with a comp with a network like Facebook, and you can put ads only in front of those people. So if you know what it is that you're offering and you know who your best customer is, let's say that your niche is prime is pretty much for women, and that men would be pretty alienated by it. Well, that's great when you do paid traffic. You say, I want to target women only. And of course, you'd want to get more targeted than that because it's still half the species. But you know what I mean? It's like you can be effective with where you put your money here and target who you're bringing in. The other thing that you can do with paid traffic is that you can bring people directly into the things on your site that make you money. Now, that's a huge one because with free traffic, Generally, people are not interested in clicking on, you know, some link and going to a sales letter. You know, they're going to want to look at content. <clears throat> Excuse me. And not only that, with content is that a fair amount of them are going to immediately bounce off your site and they're going to leave. Um, now, that's just a fact of life. We we refer to that as bounce rate. Now, so you can't guarantee that when somebody comes to your site that they're going to go to one of your money pages. They're not going to go see one of your offers. They're not going to necessarily get onto your list. They're not going to necessarily sign up for a webinar. They're not necessarily going to do anything that furthers your business along. Whereas with paid traffic, you could directly send them into those things. Okay, you can say, I only want people to click right into my squeeze page to get onto my list and get my lead magnet. You can do that, whereas if they go to your general blog, it's a free-for-all. You don't know what they're going to do. You could put things in front of them to try to get them to click to the squeeze page, but most people won't do it, okay? So that's one of the major benefits of paid traffic. Here's another one 
that will be very real to people who are trying to promote their sites and get traffic from social media. You probably have noticed that there is an organic reach. I'll call it a problem, but it's not really a problem. Essentially, if you post to Facebook, this is a really good example, only a very small fraction of the people who are connected to you, either as a friend or as a fan, are actually going to see what you have to say. Most people, Facebook will literally not even show that show it to them. Um, and so that is called organic reach. It's just you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it organically. Uh, same thing with Twitter. Now, Twitter doesn't do it the same way as Facebook. The problem with Twitter is sheer noise. <laughs> and so, you know, you put out a tweet, and let's say, just off the top of my head, let's say you have 1,000 followers. Chances are, if you put out a tweet, maybe 30 or 40 or 50 people are going to see it. Okay? And it's simply because of sheer volume. Your tweet just races right on by. So, and this you will see on on lot of, lots of places. So basically, there's a lot of noise out there. And the way to cut through it is by paying. Pay to play. So if you go to Facebook and you drop a Facebook-sponsored post, an ad, in other words, you're going to get seen, okay? Because that, I mean, Facebook is a for-profit company. So that's how you bypass the problem of organic reach. In fact, you do all that work to get your Facebook page up to 1,000 fans or 5,000 fans, you essentially have to pay to reach those people anyway, which is one of the funniest things. Why I, I really don't worry about growing my fan page. I guess it would be a vanity metric. It makes my brand look bigger <laughs> the more fans that I have. But I can't say that I put the slightest bit of effort into growing the fan base on my page because I don't look at it as a valuable asset to me. If I say something, only a fraction of the people connected to that page see it anyway. And if I want to get it out in front of more people, I've got to pay for it. Well, the thing is, I can pay to reach people, and I don't need them to be connected to my page in order to do it. So I don't see the point. Thing is, I can cut through it like a knife through butter, cut through all that noise and the problem with organic reach by simply doing paid traffic. Okay? So I hope you will see that there's definitely a power to both of them. The, and I do believe that the right way to go is to utilize both free traffic and paid traffic. I mean, I'm a longtime blogger. The last thing that I'm going to do is tell you to stop writing content or to don't do guest posting or stop podcasting or stop making videos. Content marketing is an extremely powerful thing, but we do need to realize where it sits in the scheme of things. And I think the proper mix today is that we need to also be able to utilize paid traffic. We need to be able to pay for it because that's how you cut through all the clutter, reach exactly who you want, and how you make the growth of your business predictable. Because like I said, if you pay for it, you're going to get the traffic. It's all then a matter of what you do with it, okay? Now, very closely related to this, I want to once again invite you to the big monetization webinar. That's at blogmonetizationwebinar.com. It has everything to do with what we're talking about on this episode because monetization, doing it right, having that structure in place is what will enable you to do paid traffic without that feeling like you're just farting money into thin air. It like I said, when it, when you pay for the traffic, you're going to get it. The trick is what happens to them when they get there. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about on this webinar. Okay, so that's blogmonetizationwebinar.com, a completely free live training delivered by yours truly, and I'd love to see you there. Okay, so with that, Hopefully you found this enlightening, got your gears going a little bit, and I'll see you on the next episode of Coffee Break Blogging. We're going to be talking about pixeling your blog visitors. In other words, we're going to be talking about a little bit of retargeting. Okay, I'll see you then.